Well, hi guys. So today I'm actually going to be cleaning a trusty old Canon 350D. And it kind of made me think earlier. This is this is actually one of my my friend's old cameras, who another friend now actually owns, and his daughter's actually going to be using it, and she has been using it. But there's obviously a little bit of dirt on the sensor or somewhere else in the camera, so I'm going to have a quick look at it and see if we can actually get it clean. But it made me think. How have things come along since this came out as a side-by-side -side comparison without looking at different companies and brands or whatever, compare this to say the RX10 Mark IV and the um, A7R Mark IV from Sony. So we've got three different lenses here. Got a 28 to 90, got a 75 to 300 and an 18 to 55. So I'm going to give them all a clean and then later on I shall take some pictures with it but also I'll take some pictures with uh, the A7R 4 It'd just be interesting just to have a look really, sort of a retro retro look of earlier DSLR and early digital cameras compared to now. So, so guys it turns out that the um, camera itself, very clean, The there is a little bit of dust or a couple of things that's managed to get inside the viewfinder so it's not on the sensor it's not on the mirror um but i can't get up inside there so it's nothing something i don't really want to break or touch too deeply it's just one of those things there's a couple of tiny little dark specks of either i don't know could be bits of dirt or dust or something that's got inside the viewfinder and it's just there so it's just one of those things that they were concerned about they just said is it something that's on the sensor it doesn't really sharpen the pictures and i said well it's probably either uh, the viewfinder then or on the mirror or something like that but generally the sensor is very clean so that's good and um, the lenses are now clean they were a little bit grubby um, to clean this lens as well back and front as well other than that the camera's in good working order and um, yeah but it does make you laugh what we're used to what we're used to now something two gig card Woo. <laughs> I haven't used one of them for a long time. And I think even I can remember back to actually what's in this one? In this old Fuji. The Fuji, how else? A super thin card. And this one is 16 megabytes. So yeah. A sudden jump from a few megabytes into gigabytes and now we're up to what well, I mean I use um I use, I think, I mean, I use 128 gig cards or 64 gig cards. So, and think about the A7R, uh, A7R4, if I was to do a pixel pixel shift image at the full full resolution, full quality, uh, when you put that together, it ends up with a 2.03 gigabyte image um, at its maximum. So, yeah, just shows you one image could be uh, the equivalent to that whole card. It's quite funny. Um, but just shows you how things have moved on technical wise and uh, but end of the day these cameras doesn't matter how advanced they are now this camera still take very good photos you know decent light good subject decent composition and uh, you're still going to get some very pleasing photos from it so yeah at the end of the work, end of the day it's a good learning tool this one um so yeah brilliant camera and obviously you've got three different lenses here but you can pick these up very, very cheap nowadays because they're, they're quite old. The technology is not quite the same as it is nowadays. And obviously auto autofocus speeds and everything are very, very different today, especially now we're onto mirrorless and stuff like that as well. So these lenses are really, really good, good quality. Um, especially this one here is, is nice and sharp. Obviously it's not that fast as in, you know, the F number, what is it, an F5.6. So, you know, but I use the 100 to 400 F5.6. So it's still very, very good in good light. So that's not really an issue at all. Um, the cheaper lens is like this really, it's quite a plasticky one. I'm not sure what the quality of the glass inside is or if some are possibly some of the plastic elements as well. You do, did used to get plastic elements in uh, the really cheaper, you know, budget lenses, especially when they came with the camera. This is probably the 18 to 35, was it 18 to 55 that came with the camera, I expect. Um, these two here obviously have been bought afterwards. 
Uh, this camera, I really still love about it. They actually, the can this is a thing, the Canon thing. They just put a, a wireless remote on the strap, and it actually clips in there. Absolutely brilliant idea. Um, not seen it since really. But it's a really handy little thing to have, especially if you're doing shooting bulb, you know, very long exposures and stuff like that. It's really handy to have, and it's always there for you. It's on the strap, so you know, it's one of the things that's it was quite a cool thing. And I was really kind of gutted about that when I had my Konica Minolta's back in the days, and it never didn't have that. Um, Obviously, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try it out now. Just uh, take a few shots, make sure it's good. And the RX10 Mark IV and the uh, A7R4 as well. So filming on my phone at the moment because I haven't got enough cameras to film and photograph at the same time. So yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's do this and uh, see how we turn out. So we now have it on the tripod and uh, you suddenly realize you actually have to look through the viewfinder. Um, you can't use the flippy screen or anything like that to compose your shots. And uh, yeah, so back to the real world. Shooting in manual, obviously, to get the uh, the most accurate I can get from it. But yeah, it suddenly takes you back a little bit, doesn't it? It's funny, we moan about the size of screens and all this sort of other stuff nowadays and how fast things are and how slow things are. You know, we've come a long way in the last 15 or so years. and. Uh, I started off with the A7R Mark IV one because I could do a little bit of video like this so you can see what the view looked like uh, just in video. I was using the 100-400 G-Master lens on the A7R IV. Obviously the RX10 Mark IV as well with its 24-600mm uh, lens. And the 350D had a, I think it was a 75-300 f5.6 lens. So I took that as the the working range so I put that at 300 mil set it at f5.6 and then I set the a7r4 at uh, the same settings at yeah, 300 mil f5.6 and then just worked through the ISO range really uh, cutting a few out but basically just jumping up and seeing what the difference is and it's just interesting to see how we've come one with sensor technology and how shutter speeds have changed due to the sensitivity of it, the sensor uh, uh, which I've noticed also that's down to the size of the sensor and obviously the, the technology involved as well um, and also lens technology how things are a little bit sharper possibly uh, but mainly just looking at the noise so looking at the Canon first the base ISO was 100 um, which I started off at and I went right through to its maximum which is 1600 ISO so looking at this one here, as you can see, the photos are coming out of it very, very nice. It was pretty sharp, eight megapixels, and uh, as you can see, I put the the settings on each uh, each photo, and I just stepped the ISO up a little bit. The angle of view is going to be slightly different because of the size of the lenses, cameras, and everything. So I couldn't get it 100% the same very easily. So I just kind of just left it what as was. But it also allows you to see um, what they're like. As is it, nice and clean, no real dramas at all. Uh, obviously, an APS-C size sensor. Shooting in uh, RAW as well. Um, had quite a bit of uh, control over the uh, the camera there. You can see there, you know, smaller sensor, quite a bit of depth there, uh, with no issues. ISO 800, still pretty good. Um, but as you can see, the my shutter speed and everything are, are being adjusted as well, keeping the f-stop the same. But yeah, I mean pretty good camera I mean very very good to learn on today uh, very basic and this is its maximum ISO and I thought well, ISO 1600 is not bad at all and we moan today about noise you know and I thought this is quite a good little test actually just not scientific just a bit of an interest uh, to see the difference between how we've come along so onto the RX10 Mark IV um, ISO 100 f4 though just to show you the difference in shutter speeds and uh, the way things look but as you can see here smaller sensor sensor even at f4 more depth um, but suddenly quite a bit sharper but that's just probably down to the depth if anything um, even though the lens quality is very very good uh, you know even uh, now f5.6 and I did a couple of different things here just to, out of interest just to show you the real depth there shooting at ISO 1000 at f16 at 150th of a second so a little bit of noise but the depth everything's pretty much in focus so utilizing that f-stop and uh, the smaller sensor there just to really get some depth involved into the image there 
and then ISO 2000. As you can see, a little bit of grain. It's not, it's not unusable. And none of these pictures, by the way, have been touched. They've just literally straight out of the camera, straight into this, and uh, you know, not uh, adjusted or any noise reduction added at all. So this is where the RX10 Mark IV starts to struggle a little bit. ISO 2000, f5.6, 1640 the second. But you've got nice fast shutter speeds, and with Topaz or a denoise program or another program that you could probably eliminate most of this with not too much of an issue but as you can see the shadows now are starting to become a little bit grainy um, and pushing it up to ISO 3200 and then up to 6400 next and it starts to it's just wash out now this is this camera is not really designed to be able to do this it, the sensor is too small but it, you know up to 1600 2000 it is usable as you can go up to what we're going to now 10,000 as you can see it's just become a bit of a mess really and that's in good light as well so you know you could underexpose it a little bit and probably lose a little bit of the noise possibly but as you can see it just becomes a bit of a mess and then right to its maximum ISO which is uh, 12,800 and it's just yeah it's still sharp it's still you can still see exactly what it is but the grain is is quite horrendous so you know Keeping the RX10 Mark IV down at 100 to 800 in that sort of area is uh, very, very worthwhile. Uh, onto the A7R4, which is obviously a full frame sensor, so different world really, but as you can see, the depth of field very shallow um, at f5.6. Um, but you can see the difference in quality, it's, it's a different league, but then it's going to be. And then as I move up through the ISO, um, the A7R4 is apparently renowned for. You know noise problems and everything like that, and I don't really agree. Um, I've used this and many other of the other cameras, especially the high uh, high resolution ones. It's very usable. Yeah, a little bit of noise reduction occasionally, but you know, I'm going to take this right up to its highest or its maximum base ISO kind of thing, um, and you'll see how it goes. ISO 1600, no drama whatsoever. And uh, you know it's very very usable yet yeah, in certain certain circumstances and conditions you are going to see more noise than you would do in a in a different image so sometimes yes having a denoise program or whatever to help you eliminate it is quite helpful but also got to remember we do sometimes zoom in a bit too far start pixel peeping when we're looking at above the 100 100 percent image size you know i see 6400 you can start seeing a little bit of grain now um, and then I push it up to 12,800 I think or was I go 16 yeah 8,000 sorry um, uh, yeah so yeah, it's starting to look a little bit grainy in the background but the actual image itself as in the, the camera still very well controlled not looking too bad and then we move to ISO 16,000 and then you know is what it is it is you know it's still pretty good it could be uh, dealt with quite nicely with a denoise program but it's hardly horrible you know and then we move to ISO 32000 which is its maximum native uh, ISO so we can go up to 104000 but that's completely pointless at this sort of shutter speed I'm at maximum shutter speed as well and that's the reason I didn't uh, go any higher is it is a bit noisy but that could also be uh, dealt with so these shots here are side by side. So that is ISO 1600 on the Canon on the left hand side. And that's ISO 16000 to the A7R4 on the right hand side. As you can see, still, you know, the the difference between, you know, things years ago and now have moved a lot, moved on a long, a long way, shall I say, um, since then. So, you know, sensor technology obviously autofocus and stuff like that has really really changed you know the speed and now we've got up to 8k video and all that sort of stuff as well which obviously does make a huge huge difference um, to the usability of the cameras you know it gives us so much scope on what to do and how to do it but I think really think that the ISO issue isn't really an issue at all I think it's just people you know we're always never really satisfied you know we always want something better we always want something better and better and better and the new sony a1 for example people are already saying oh it's as noisy as this and it's as noisy as that in the real world it, it doesn't matter you know we're you've got to remember you look at a photo as 
one, a hole. So you stand back from it, you know, if you print it at A1 or A0 or A00 or even 10 feet across, you're not going to stand there with your face up against it, you know, two inches away. You're going to be stood back. And that's when you, you're not going to see the pixelation. You're not going to see anything like that. So I think we do worry too much. I think we are, you know, always comparing others. You know, I don't really care what make the camera anybody uses. You pick that camera to use because you like it. You like how it, how it works. You like how it feels. You like the menu system, whatever, um, or you already own other things like the, the lenses and things that will fit on it. So, you know, it's down to how you want to use it. And all the cameras take an amazing, amazing photo, even 15, 16 years ago, it still takes a great photo. But, you know, technology is moving on all the time. And, you know, I think it's just a case of, you know, we need to uh, stop whinging about it really and just get on with it and just keep taking photos and actually enjoy what we do rather than you know pixel peeping and, and moaning about this and the other when it's not really an issue um, obviously if you push it right up to its highest points which you've seen here yeah you have got quite a bit of grain but it's you know you just generally you wouldn't shoot that high anyway 99% um, of the time I'm shooting ISO 100 to 1600 maybe 3200 you know most of the time you know most of the time so you know we the cameras are way in there you know usable range so anyway the last set of picture here is the difference between the Canon again on the left hand side and this is the RX10 Mark IV on the right hand side and uh, as you can see here ISO 3200 the RX10 still usable but not quite as clean as obviously something that is uh, got a slightly bigger sensor but also a slightly lower ISO but I'll just show you sort of contrasting situations of how things may have got better or not and now I'm going to add a couple of shots from the a7r4 and the rx10 after they've had a denoise um, from topaz denoise AI so you can see the difference um, of how things have really changed and uh, you know how we can utilize programs like that to to get rid of noise if we really need to and uh, you know so anyway guys I just thought it was a bit of fun um, just to see really I had the camera there I had to take some test shots with it anyway to make sure it was working so I thought I might as well make a little video out of it and I just thought you know what it's quite interesting to see how things have come along and how things have moved along one with things like the screens um, the viewfinder actually how clear the viewfinder is size wise and obviously now we're on to EVF so electronic viewfinders how how quickly you can actually do stuff uh, you know how things have been thought out and changed obviously grips and um, button placements and things like that it was all very different having a camera going back when I was used to using that sort of camera you know 15 years ago and how we are using these things today the cameras today are incredible and I think you know we are spoiled big time you know the technology of now is absolutely bonkers and I think we just need to kind of sometimes just step back a bit and actually realize how lucky we are we can actually get photos that i used to struggle to get you know five years ago i got a shot of a dragonfly uh, in flight which i've been trying to get for years struggled and struggled and struggled finally onto mirrorless managed to get a shot pretty straight you know uh, i think i probably took about 20 or 30 shots and got got the one i wanted basically you know there's, there's still some other ones in there that were sharp and everything but onto the A7R4 or the RX10 Mark IV, I can get hundreds. It's made it so much easier for me to do because the autofocus systems are much faster, the way the cameras work are much faster, and it just made it more efficient and easier to capture stuff. So, you know, it, I think it's just an eye opener that you know we forget how technology changes and how how spoiled we are basically with the technology we have today. So, anyway, guys, any thoughts about this? Please leave comments below and uh, i shall see you soon don't forget to click the subscribe button and a uh, little notification bell as well and you'll see when i post another video i shall see you soon